Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So look who we have today. We have Mr. Ben Fuchs here again today, one of my good friends, and he's been here before. You guys loved him the first time, so he is back. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> so we are gonna do, um, we're gonna do a little skincare series again. You guys enjoyed it so much the first time. We got so many questions from the first videos. So he is back today. We're gonna do a little question and answer today. You guys were on my Instagram, asked me a bunch of questions, and. We're just gonna kind of take questions from our old videos too. Awesome. Yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's talk okay. about all the skincare stuff. All right, so going off of our Instagram questions first, let's talk about acne because we get a lot of questions about acne. People suffer from acne so much. Um, we have a bunch of people talking about acne, like hormonal acne. Um, they've tried supplements. They've tried taking out dairy and taking out, you know, different food issues, uh, possibly. They started a probiotic. What's your take on what's going on? Acne. Mm -hmm. Well. First of all, you know why we have a problem treating acne? Because we don't really know what it is. Acne is really a biochemical issue and it involves numerous biochemical factors, but when we treat acne, we treat this one homogenous disease. So we see this on the face, we, we call it acne. We don't address the individual biochemical breakdowns that are occurring underneath the skin that cause the acne, and it's kind of like a poster child for what's wrong with how we treat the skin. When we look at the skin, we see uh, a kind of covering for the inside of the body, but we don't see a dynamic organ. We don't see a biochemical organ. We don't see, uh, uh, you know, when we think of a heart or we think of a spleen, we think of the lungs, we think of an organ. It's got right. kind of a throbbing nature, movement. It's almost like it's gross if you look at a heart. Or right. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want to. But you don't have that with the skin. Right. The skin almost looks like it's inert. So when things happen on the, on the surface of the skin, naturally we think, well, I'm just going to treat what I see on top of the skin. Mm -hmm. That's the, and that's what's wrong with how we treat psoriasis. That's what's wrong with how we treat ac eczema. That's what's wrong with how we treat dry skin. That's what's, what's wrong with how we treat everything in the skin, but especially when it comes to acne. So the problem with, with uh, dealing with acne is by the time you see the zit, it's over. Right. That's the end result. That's, yep. that's how the body has rectified the situation. The key to really treating acne is to understand the biochemistry underneath acne. So to figure out what's going on with acne, we've got to kind of zoom into the skin. If you zoom into the skin with a microscope or even with a magnifying glass, you'll see little, op little uh, circles, almost like openings. They're called pores, mm -hmm. right? Inside the pore or underneath the pore, you have like a cave almost, a rabbit hole. It's like the pore is the top of the rabbit right. hole. And underneath, underneath you have uh, the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole is called a follicle. You've got the follicle and you've got the, the little opening on the top. That's called the pore. Acne is a defect at the level of the follicle. Right. And there's lots of things that can cause that. And I, I should say the typical type of acne is a defect at the level of the follicle. There's three things that have to happen for you to get your acne breakout. First of all, the cells that line the follicle have to divide really rapidly, more rapidly than, ordinar than they ordinarily uh, okay. would. So that, forms, that uh, forms a kind of blockage. The follicle also has a little oil pump. It's called a sebum pump or a sebaceous gland. Yep. So when the cells start to divide rapidly inside the follicle, the sebum can't get out and it gets locked up inside that follicle. So you've got this complex of dead cells or cells that are dividing rapidly and you've got the sebum. If no top forms over that, this pore, that oil that's trapped in those rapidly dividing cells will turn black. We call that a blackhead. Mm -hmm. If yep. cells line the top of that pore, that protects the trapped sebum from oxidizing. We call that a whitehead. Mm. Now, at this point, you don't have your full-blown acne yet. You mm -hmm. just have whiteheads and blackheads, and those right. are, those are uh, somewhat common. The two main causes are the cells that are dividing rapidly inside the follicle and the trapped oils, and the, uh, the trapped sebaceous oils. Okay. If bacteria get trapped in there and bacteria start to proliferate, you end up with a bacterial infection inside that follicle, and that's where you have your full-blown zit. Okay. So the three elements that you want to address if you're dealing with acne are the rapidly dividing cells, number one, the trapped oil, number two, and the bacteria. So why are, they why are the cells, why are they... Bingo. Why yeah. are the cells dividing rapidly? Right. When it comes to nutrition, when it comes to health, I always, in, in my talks, I always say, all disease is cell disease. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means all health issues can be backtracked to the level of the cell. When it comes to acne, there's something wrong at the level of the cell that's causing that cell to divide rapidly. Typically, it involves nutritional deficiencies, especially uh -huh. deficiencies in fatty vitamins. See, when cells grow, you want cells to grow, mm -hmm. but you don't want them to overgrow. Mm -hmm. And what controls the way cells grow is their communication with each other. 
So cells are always talking to each other and the cells on the top are saying, hey, we got enough up here, stop growing. Or they're saying, we, we got a shortage up here, we need to be replenished, we right. need to be replaced. The talking or the communication of cell to cell, cells talking to each other, occurs at the level of the membrane, the outer portion of a cell. The outer portion of a cell is fatty. Okay. And it depends on fats and fatty vitamins. So the key to controlling cell growth when it's growing too fast, and I'm talking about psoriasis, if yeah. cells are growing too fast, I'm talking about cancer, if cells are growing too fast, I'm talking about acne, if cells are growing too fast, right. any condition where cells are growing too fast is to stabilize the outside part of cells. Under conditions of nutritional deficiency, the outside part of cells, that is the cell membrane, breaks down and doesn't communicate as effectively to other cells. So whenever you have a fast, a, a hyperproliferative or a fast growing state where cells are growing really fast, you want to focus on essential fatty acids, you want to focus on fatty vitamins, especially right. vitamins A and D. Okay. Vitamins a, between vitamins A and D and fatty vitamins, you have your control point for uh, uh, modifying how cells communicate to each other. Right. So the go-to vitamin treatment for acne, for hyperproliferative acne, there's another kind of acne I'll tell you about here in a second. Uh, the go-to point for this hyperproliferative or, or fast-growing cell-caused acne is vitamin A, by far. Oh, okay. and, and that's why the only prescription drug mm -hmm. for treating acne is what? Is the retin-A. Which is vitamin right. A. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Vitamin A helps control, whether it's in the retin-A form or in the retinol form, right. helps control the growth of cells. Mm -hmm. Helps stabilize the growth of cells. And that's why last time we talked about how you can actually use vitamin right. A to treat cancer. Right. And also, uh, there's a condition called KP, uh, keratosis pyloris, yep. any kind of condition where cells are growing too rapidly on, on the skin or inside the body, vitamin, vitamin A is your go-to vitamin. Okay. Exactly. So topically and taking Topically it and internally. Yep. Okay. Topically and internally. Now remember, this is one type of acne. This yeah. is the second type yep. I'll tell you about here in a second. This is an acne, by the way, uh, we call androgenic acne which is an acne that's caused by an excess in male hormones mm -hmm. or an excess in a specific type of male hormone. Keep in mind, women make male hormones too. Right. It's not just a male issue. It's a, it can be a female issue depending on hormones. So mm -hmm. that's going to be another a second strategy I'll talk about here in a second. Um, also, essential fatty acids are important for a couple of reasons. Uh, the membrane, the outside part of a cell, is made up of essential fatty acids. So under conditions of deficiencies, which a lot of people are deficient mm -hmm. in essential fatty acids. I was. I got, well, I got tested and I was really low. And I noticed a change in my skin after I started supplementing. Major skin nutrient. Yeah. Major skin nutrient. So essential fatty acids also are part of the membrane. And essential fatty acids also do something else very interesting. They help liquefy sebum. So under conditions of essential fatty acid deficiency, your sebum, your skin oil, will become thick and more prone to clog inside the follicle. Oh, so okay. essential fatty acids have play a double role. Right. They can help with the membrane and they can help with the oils to help liquefy the oils. Oh, interesting, okay. Vitamin D is another very important growth vitamin and vitamin D, the best place to get your vitamin D is from the sun. And when I say growth, sta growth stabilizing mm -hmm. vitamin or cell division stabilizing vitamin. And the best place to get your vitamin D is from the sun and anybody who has acne knows that when they go out in the sun, their acne improves. Right. Vitamin yeah. D has an important cell growth stabilizing property. So yeah, vitamins A, D, and essential fatty acids. Now, a second uh, reason why cell, one of the main reasons why cells proliferate really fast inside the follicle is because uh, of this membrane problem. But a second reason is hormones, mm -hmm. especially testosterone. So, and, and particularly it's a form of testosterone called DHT, which is like a super testosterone. It's like mega active form of testosterone that's implicated in, how, in cells growing fast in cancer, cells growing fast inside the, uh, inside the follicle. So using things that help, uh, that help uh, the body process testosterone, using nutrients to help okay. the body process testosterone. The key player in testosterone production or, or helping the body process testosterone is zinc. And zinc is as important as vitamin A for acne. In fact, if you take zinc out of the diet of, of animals experimentally, you'll get acne-like lesions. So zinc is almost like a, a, a I don't want to say cure, but it's right. almost like a yeah. cure for Since acne. Since you actually mentioned that in our video before, you mentioned the, the zinc picolini. I right. got so many um, comments saying that they tried it, yes. and they're, like, their breakouts went away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's because it helps stabilize male hormones. Zinc is a... A, a major player in the production of collagen for making new skin cells. Uh, right. Zinc, if you wound yourself or you burn yourself, the zinc in your skin will migrate to the wound to help stimulate the healing of the wound. Oh, and zinc good. deficiency, as important yeah. as zinc is, and by the way, zinc's not just important for the skin it, or the hormones, it's important for the immune system, it's important for the digestive system, it plays roles in almost every cell in the body. Zinc plays a role because it's involved in the, the production of DNA. And as important as zinc is, zinc deficiency is one of the most common nutritional deficiencies right. that there are. It's either number one or number two most common nutritional deficiency, right. Right. as important as it is. And one of the neat things about the body is the more deficient you are, 
the faster your body absorbs the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So zinc deficiency is very common, but that what that means is, is once you put zinc into the system, once you start supplementing with zinc, yeah. your body sucks that up like a dry sponge sucks up water. Wow, yeah. And you get really quick results. Right. So I don't I don't like saying the word cure, right. but it's almost like a right. cure. I've it. heard it's it from acting. people, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You need, uh, the best form is zinc picolinate. Yep. There's different forms of zinc. Yep. You, don't want to, you don't want the zinc gluconate or the zinc sulfate. Those are a little bit harder for the body to process. A lot of people actually get nauseous from zinc uh -huh. gluconate and zinc sulfate, and they'll tell you to take it with food. You don't have to do that with zinc picolinate. Okay. 50 milligrams a day, and when you're taking zinc, you have a tendency to lose copper. So it's important, and it's helpful to supplement with copper when you take zinc. And copper is also a very important skin vitamin, important for the okay. production of collagen, or skin mineral. So it's uh, important for the production of collagen. So if you're taking zinc, it's a good idea to take copper, maybe two milligrams of copper a day. Is that, is, um, because you have the supplements. I have zinc and copper in you my blood. You do. I was going to say, yes, yeah, you yes, do. So yes. that's okay. You don't want to take zinc without copper because you can okay. run into copper deficiencies when you take zinc. Oh. Everything in the body is balanced. Yeah. And if you take too much of one or you start supplementing with one, you can run into deficiencies with the other. And that's why zinc and copper go together. Calcium okay. and magnesium are like that. They, those go together. And okay. there's different balances of minerals that you want to be paying attention to. Supplementing is really tricky because, you know, we're not supposed to supplement. Right. And I wish we didn't have to supplement. Right, exactly. I wish we got everything from food, exactly. right? Exactly. But you can't get everything from food. The way the soils are, because of food processing, because yes. of cooking, because of storage. All of these things that we've done in our, with our modern food supply have sort of conspired to assure that we're going to be deficient. So supplementing is kind of a necessary evil. Right. And but it is tricky, like you said, because you want tricky. to make sure you balance everything it's out. It's a little tricky, and that's yeah. why I do my talks, and that's why I try to create formulations that have yeah. everything balanced, because it is a little bit tricky. But, right. you know, it's something so important. We should really be participating in our, our nutritional world. Mm -hmm. If we really want to leverage our, our 130 year, we were talking yesterday, how we have a 130 year genetic lifespan. Yeah. If we're really going to take advantage of that and, and be able to maximize the amount of life we have to 130, and even if we don't go to 130, just don't rot and, and deteriorate right. at age 40 or 50 right. or 60, we have to understand some of the basics about nutrition. So uh, that's androgenic acne. Zinc, vitamin A, slow okay. down the growth of cells. Now, the Wait, well, one second. How do you know what kind of acne you I have? Tell you okay, perfect. <laughs> Okay, so the second type of acne, don't okay. forget to ask me. Okay. That's a good the second type of acne is really tricky because it's not androgenic acne. It's not caused by the cells dividing rapidly. Rather, it's caused by an immune and an inflammatory response, a defensive response. Okay. So again, we have to zoom in with our x-ray vision into the skin and go past this surface. And we have to go a little bit deeper and what you'll see is a blood supply. And the blood supply carries nutrients and it carries oxygen and it removes toxins. Over time, as that blood supply becomes toxic, uh, because of, mostly because of how we eat, uh, toxins can leak out into the skin tissue. When toxins leak out into the skin tissue, an inflammatory response can ensue. And this can cause a sort of rashy appearance on the skin. This rashy appearance on the skin will tend to be in the cheek areas. And you ask where I can tell the difference. Well, the second type of acne, which is an immune response, an inflammatory response to contaminated blood, will occur where you have a lot of lymphatic system, where you have a lot of lymph. Uh, the lymph and the blood are sort of parallel systems. And that's in the cheek area. Okay. Or also in this area here, the lower cheek, or sometimes in the sides of the face. Mm -hmm. When you're breaking out here and here in the sides of your face, that's a sign that you're dealing with the second type of acne, which is a more of an a, a inflammatory or immune kind of acne. And that's related to things getting into the blood through the digestive system. Okay. That's a food condition and okay. a digestive condition. And it needs to be distinguished from the, sec the first type of acne, which is the androgenic acne, where the cells are dividing really rapidly and your skin's really oily. That's a T-zone acne. Oh, okay. So when acne appears along the T-zone, what you're looking as, at is the first type of acne. Okay. When acne appears along the cheeks, uh, upper cheeks and lower cheeks and along the sides of the face, that's the second type of acne. And the reason this is important, this is how we started off talking about how we don't distinguish the biochemistry. We see zits as zits. Mm -hmm. we, see, we see pimples as pimples. They're all the same thing. And right. if you go to the doctor for, for the second type of acne, he's just going to treat you like you have regular acne. Right. Completely oblivious to the fact that the problem's in the blood. Uh -huh. The problem is in the blood toxicity. Yep. So if you're breaking out here and here, you have the second type of acne. What you want to do is you want to focus on the blood, cleaning the blood by working on your digestive system. Yep. And not just by eliminating... Does that mean you usually have a food, like food intolerance? Always, have a food, always okay. have a food intolerance. And you can prove it to yourself by stopping eating for a couple of days. Yep. And you'll notice that your skin improves. Now, it's not going to necessarily improve this, the T-zone acne, as much, although it will improve it a little bit because this is also partially, partially related to food. Yeah. I forgot to tell you about insulin. 
uh, insulin is a blood sugar hormone that really revs things up, very similar to testosterone. And like testosterone can rev up cell division, insulin can do the same thing. This is why sometimes, the, I know I'm digressing here just a little bit, but sometimes you'll hear how people, uh, dermatologists will tell you, or, or you'll read in Cosmo or some of these magazines, yeah. you'll read uh, uh, chocolate doesn't cause acne. Right. It's a myth that, you know. Right. The hell it doesn't. Yeah. It absolutely does, or it absolutely can. Because of the sugar? Because of the sugar. sugar. Yeah. Exactly. And when we think of chocolate, sometimes you'll hear people say how healthy chocolate is, it's got good benefits. It's not the chocolate that's healthy, it's the cocoa that's right. healthy. And yep. nobody likes cocoa. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know? right. right. Cocoa doesn't taste yeah. good. It's only about the sugar. <laughs> exactly, yeah. the sugar and the fat. Yeah. So we like the chocolate. Yep. So chocolate is a very problematic food, not for everybody, but yep. for some people because of the sugar and because of the insulin it has a revving up effect. Okay. So back to our uh, digestive acne, you want to focus on two things if you're dealing with acne on the cheeks uh, or on the sides and it's rashy. In, in uh, medicine, they say papular. There's two kinds of rashes. You have macular rashes and papular rashes. Mm -hmm. You hear that term? Yeah, yeah. Papular is like pimply, yep. and macular is more flat and rashy. Yep. So if you're, if you're dealing with macular, flat and rashy breakouts on the sides, and on the sides of your face or, or on the uh, jawline area, Focus on foods, prove it to yourself by taking a couple days off of foods, and for the most part, you'll notice. Because your skin will start to clear you'll up. You'll notice yeah. your skin will start to clear up. And then when you reintroduce foods, pay attention to your skin. Also pay attention to your digestive system. Mm -hmm. you know, heartburn, gas, bloating, mm -hmm. loose stools, constipation. All of these things are indicative that you're having a problem processing food. Right. And it's actually good news if you notice that you have that kind of acne and you have digestive problems. Mm -hmm. When you start working this way, both the digestive system will improve, right. the health of the digestive system will improve and the, and the health of the skin. Okay. So long story short is acne is not just acne, it's not right. just pimples, and you can't really address it topically except for the exfoliation because it's a biochemical issue that's occurring underneath. Yep. And you gotta get at it through the blood and through nutrition. Okay, so what about this person who says she's tried everything? What should, you never say, to, never tried say everything. I tried everything. <laughs> never say that because that locks you out and you, that, that boxes you out yeah. if you say I tried everything. Yeah. Say, I tried a lot of things. Right. Okay. So what else, what else can you try? I mean, she said she's first started a probiotic. So here's how you do it. Okay. okay. First assess what kind of acne you're dealing with. Yeah. Okay. If you're dealing with so one of those two. Okay. If, so, so let's say it's T-zone acne. You're going to do vitamin A. You're going to do zinc. You're going to do exfoliation. You're going to watch out for your sugar yep. uh, or lower your sugar, lower your insulin. Um, what else here for uh, uh, topical retinoids, mm -hmm. topical, topical vitamin A is very important for androgenic acne. Um, I said zinc. Uh, selenium is also important for androgenic acne. Uh, and then uh, working with the liver, helping improve liver health because the liver processes testosterone. And so if you have a testosterone involved, and that's actually what my blemish repair complex is. I was going to say this it's all the liver like, nutrients. Okay, so he has a Truth Treatment's blemish repair complex. Blemish repair, repair complex supplement. has liver nutrients. It has nutrients that are specifically designed to help the liver work better. N acetylcysteine, for example, which is my all time favorite yeah. non essential supplement. Um, selenium, sulfur, chromium, the B-complex, these are all designed to help the liver process testosterone and also insulin to a certain extent to slow down that hyper, hyper proliferation. Um, the second type of acne, if you notice that the acne is here on the sides of the face or on the jawline area, link it to foods. Always link, it's a good idea, no matter what your health challenge is, mm -hmm. to link it to foods. Not, I'm not saying that because I'm like a food junkie or I'm a foodie or, you know, I'm some kind of, you know, eat or, only organic. Yeah, and you but it's true. Like, well, there's, it's, it's where the body, it's, that's yeah. where the out, that's where the outside world meets the inside world is at the level of the gut, yeah. the level of the small intestine. So paying attention to number one, food, but also paying attention to how you're processing food. Yeah. So paying attention to things like probiotics and digestive enzymes and bile salts and apple cider vinegar, which is like a miracle, by the way, yeah. for the digestive system and for the entire body. Um, using uh, uh, more fiber in your diet. Fiber is important for helping, uh, helping uh, feed the good bacteria. But most importantly, as, as important as the digestive system is and, and using digestive supplements, eliminating problem foods. It's huge. And it's huge. Yeah. And, and almost all the foods, in fact, all the foods we eat today didn't exist 150 or 200 right, we years ago. We were talking about this right? last night. So yeah. we're eating a foreign diet. Yeah. We're eating a diet that the human, the human body has not really evolved to adjust to. So you got to do what you can do. I mean, we got to eat. So just pay really, really close attention to what you're eating and link the foods you're eating to your breakouts. Yeah. The most and how your body feels. And how, how you your feel. Feels. Your gut feels. Yep. You know, your heartburn or your bowel movements or your gas or your you bloating. You have to be in tune. You have to be in tune with your digestive yeah. system. And it's almost like a good thing 
in a weird kind of way. When you break out on your face, you know, some people say, well, why do I have to break out so much? My friends can eat peanut butter and they can right. eat beans and I don't. Well, they may be having a problem with those foods, but they don't see it because it's not showing up on the skin. Mm -hmm. So if it's showing up on your skin, that's actually almost a good thing. It is a good thing because it's giving you a diagnostic window to what's happening exactly. inside your body. You can see when you eat food A, when you eat gluten or you eat bread or you eat cereal or you eat dairy, you break out. So mm -hmm. you'll know to stay off of it. Now, yeah. sometimes it's easier said than done, understood, but at least this gives you a point of control. The worst part about acne, and, and really all health challenges, but yeah. especially cosmetic health challenges that everybody can see, is we're out of control. We don't know what to do. Right. Like people poor, try everything. And try everything. Right. So this poor gal, she's tried all these different things. She has no idea what to mm -hmm. do. By understanding the power of the digestive system and food or the importance or the implications of digestive health and food health on the skin, it gives us control. Right. And it's, she's saying she took, she's tried taking out dairy, but dairy might not even be her might main issue. Problem. It could be another. And there's dairy in lots of things. There's right. dairy in, there, there's uh, a dairy in peanut butter. Right. There's dairy in, uh, in processed foods. Right. There's dairy everywhere. So you may yep. think you're taking out dairy if you don't even drink milk, right? But there's a watch so much of the ingredients, and that's yeah. why being an ingredient deck reader is yeah. so important. Mm -hmm. You know, you may think you're doing everything right, but if you're breaking out on the skin, there's something there. It's not yeah. like you're a bad person, but it just means that there's something there that there's you're something, missing. Right. There's something there that you're missing. Okay. Now, as far as probiotics go, there's probiotics and there's probiotics. They're not all created equal. Right. And everybody's going to respond differently to different probiotics. So what you have to do when you're dosing yourself with, probi with probiotics is you have to play with the brand and find a brand that works for you. And you also have to play with the dosage. Excuse me. The uh, uh, way you want to dose yourself with probiotics is by using something I call functional dosing. Functional dosing is where you take just enough so you get maximum effects, and where you take more, you don't get any, notice a difference. Mm -hmm. So what you'll start off by taking two, say, uh, two probiotic capsules. You say, oh, wow, I feel, I feel good. Take three. You say, wow, I feel better. Mm -hmm. Take four. say, wow, I feel great. And then you take five, and you say, well, I don't notice as much of a difference. Uh, right. Your sweet spot is right there between so how four do you, and So how does that work? Because, I mean, so you get some probiotics, say, to take one a day. You have to dose so, for yourself. Really? Dose for yourself. Okay. See what you do. If you, get, if you notice you take one a day and nothing happens, mm -hmm. take two see what happens. They're not toxic. Okay. So take three, then take four, then take five. Oh, if, you're up to like, if you're up to six or seven capsules and nothing's happening, switch brands. Switch, okay. Right, switch brands. So that's interesting because yeah. I've noticed some brands, I'll take one, and, and I feel nothing compared to other brands. So maybe it's just that you, you may need more. more. You may need more. Or yeah. maybe a different brand. Yeah. Now you're dealing with probiotics are a very interesting kind of supplement because you're dealing with a living entity. Yeah. You know, when you take minerals or you take vitamins, you're taking a molecule, you're taking a chemical, but with probiotics, you're taking a life form. A bacteria is a mm -hmm. life form when you're taking probiotics. So yeah. it's very tricky to manufacture probiotics. I mean, probiotics, bacteria that live in your gut, are responsible for almost every single health challenge or health issue yeah. that you have in your body. And when I talk about the importance of the digestive system and when I talk about the importance of, of food, what I'm really talking about is the probiotic or the microbiome, the, the bacteria that live inside the mm -hmm. gut. And I think we, I'm not sure if we talked about this last time, but it all really goes wrong, it starts to break down at birth because when we, when a baby, yeah, so did we talk about yeah, this? A little bit, yeah. When the baby comes through the birth canal, yeah. they're supposed to have be bathed with bacteria and that doesn't happen for so yeah. many people, or so many infants. And uh, then on top of that, we eat the standard American diet and we're eating lots of sugar and we, we take antibiotics and we drink antibiotics and we eat antibiotics because yeah. they're everywhere. And yeah. we, we do all of these things to conspire, uh, that conspire to destroy this microbiome. And so it's almost inevitable that we're going to have microbiome issues and then right. digestive issues and then ultimately health issues. Yeah. So taking probiotics, eating fermented food, using fiber, making sure that you're using apple cider vinegar to acidify the contents of you the stomach. You got me hooked on that stuff. It's I love it now. stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. Everything for the digestive system is yeah. important. So all roads lead back to the digestive system, not because I'm a foodie, but because that's where nutrients are processed. And if you have toxins coming into the blood through the digestive system, that's bad enough. But here's what's even worse. If you're not uh, intestine is breaking down and your digestive system is not working correctly, you're not going to get nutrients into the body. So now, mm -hmm. not only do you have toxins into the body, but now you're malnourished on top of that. Yeah. Well, in a situation like that, disease is inevitable and there's no way you can be maximally healthy. Right. So as far as that, probiotics go, get on the best probiotic supplement you can find, play with it, use functional dosing. So good dosing. that you just said about kind of dosing yourself with functional the probiotics. Functional dosing. Yeah. How you, how you so dose So good yourself. how you just said that because I had no idea about that. So those are the two basic, those are your... Androgenic acne, acne yep. and uh, digestive acne. Perfect. Now, 
I actually have a, a YouTube video that where I talk about the H app, or I talk about the uh, seven types of acne. Oh, okay. And so there's different acnes. I, I divide it up into thyroid acne, and that's a really interesting type of acne where your skin is both dry and oily. They don't know what to do because the skin is both dry and oily. Well, the oil secretion is occurring from nutritional deficiencies and problems with insulin and testosterone, so your yeah. skin's really oily. Plus cortisol, stress yeah. hormone, makes your skin oily. And then when your thyroid slows down, your skin becomes dry. So the combination of dry skin and oily skin becomes very difficult to treat. You don't know whether you're, I'm going to treat you. You have them. no idea what to you do. You don't know what yeah. to do. So you got to work at the level of the thyroid. That's the first oh, thing to do. Okay. And that means uh, stabilizing your cortisol, most importantly, using iodine, revving up the body with exercise and oxygenation. Anything you do for thyroid health will, will help the dryness. And then for the oil, lowering your insulin, lowering your sugar, reducing yeah. your cortisol. So there's lots of different strategies you can use, but the key to thyroid acne is to address both individually, both the oily skin using right. nutritional supplementation and dietary strategies, and the thyroid. Mm -hmm. There's liver acne, and that's an acne that will appear along the front part of the chest, or on the back, or on the shoulders, or even down the, all the way down the back, or in the butt. Sometimes it'll occur here. Um, this is an acne that's based in the lymphatic system and liver toxicity, and people who inject anabolic steroids will get it right away. Oh, they yeah. They call it back acne. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right? Yep. So anabolic steroids tax the liver. Mm -hmm. so the, and uh, also alcoholics will tend to get this too, which alcohol also taxes the liver. So if this yeah. is occurring, yeah. uh, you have it doesn't occur right away. That takes a while to occur, acne along the back or in the yeah. arms. That's a lymphatic and a liver condition, and that implicates detoxification. Oh. Again, the digestive system is involved. My blemish repair complex is designed for the liver. Yeah. Um, let's see what other kinds of acne. Oh, there's acne that's based in uh, stress hormone, cortisol. That's the acne that's super oily, mm -hmm. similar to uh, androgenic acne. But th these kinds of acne patients will be really oily all the time. Okay. Uh, so you got to work on the adrenal glands. You got to oh, calm okay. the adrenal glands. How do you do glands. that? Lots of ways to do it. Okay. Uh, one of the most important ways is to calm down. Just relax. Yeah. That's obviously the most important thing. Insulin spikes adrenal activity and sugar. So eat laying off insulin and sugar. There's great adrenal nutrients. One of the all-time great adrenal nutrients is vitamin B5. In fact, vitamin B5 is like zinc is like a cure, almost like a cure, I'll say. For acne, vitamin B5 is almost like a cure for adrenal acne and cortisol issues and oily ah. skin. Vitamin B5 is involved in uh, the production of adrenal hormones. Okay. Um, DHEA, you know, DHEA mm -hmm. is kind of interesting because DHEA can actually make your skin more oily if you take too much. It can actually rev up uh, uh, the adrenal glands. So you got to be very, really careful with DHEA. Pregnenolone also uh, can be helpful for calming the adrenal glands. Vitamin C is very important for the adrenal glands. Zinc. Is very I know vitamin C is that we should all be supplementing, right? We should Everybody. All be with... I just feel like we're always talking about nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about skin, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it's all connected. It's all yeah. part of nutrition. And as yeah. much as I love topical skincare, and, and even when you're doing topical skincare, if you do topical skincare correctly, you'll focus on nutrition. Yeah. And that's why the truth, always I always put lots of nutrients, lots of... Uh, things that the body can use in a nutritional fashion in my products. Vitamin it's like, it's like the nutrition for your topical skin. Topical nutrition exactly. for the skin. Exactly. Yeah. Like this nutritional supplement for the skin. Yep. Okay, perfect. So that's kind of our, that's acne. Acne, acne condensed. That's, that's very condensed. There's <laughs> yes, lots more. There today. is, There's yes. Um, so let's talk about KP because I've gotten a couple questions about vitamin KP a. issues. S vitamin A. That's, a, that's actually a sign of a vitamin A deficiency. Is it really? Keratosis pylorus, chicken skin. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anytime you have cells growing too rapidly, which is what chicken skin is mm -hmm. or KP is, and it's also uh, acne, think of the membrane. Mm -hmm. Think of the fatty membrane. Um, and that's vitamin A. Vitamin A, is, so vitamin supplement? A and vitamin D okay. together. Yes, vitamin A supplement and also retinol topically. Vitamin okay. A topically for KP. So you could take retinol and put it on your arms or... Absolutely. Like, Ret right, okay. Retinol is not just for your face. Yeah. Retinol is head to toe. Mm -hmm. you know, you're all, skin is skin. Wherever you have skin, you need retinol topically. Now, yeah. the expense of retinol will limit how much people can use, but I, under ideal situation, you'll t definitely you put it on right. head to toe. In fact, I recommend people treat their bodies once a week or once yeah. every couple of weeks with a good dose of retinol. And just by, when they get out of the shower, just put some all over right. your body. It's a little bit expensive, but it's a great treatment for your exactly. skin from head to toe. And I think we talked about this a second ago, but if we haven't, it's not just what you take, it's what you absorb. Mm -hmm. So if you take vitamin A, take essential fatty acids, take vitamin D, now that you know about your fatty vitamins, but you're not absorbing fats, yeah. you're not going to get the benefit. Okay. And fat absorption is much trickier than water absorption. Remember, there's two kinds of nutrients, fatty and watery. Watery nutrients are absorbed readily, but fatty nutrients require bile, require a healthy liver, require gallbladder, require digestive enzymes, require a fully functioning pancreas. All of these 
systems start to break down as we get older, particularly with women, as women get older, of course. <laughs> as women get older, when you, because their hormone drop is, yeah. is really significant as women age and go into menopause. So these growth inducing and growth stabilizing nutrients diminish or deplete themselves rapidly as we age. And this is not only one of the reasons why we tend to get skin problems, but also why we tend to, or why we tend to get uh, a superficial skin problems like sun and pigmentation mm -hmm. all, all of, and a KP, all of which involve the growth of cells and the act activation of cells, but it's also why tissue begins to thin as we get older. And this is what we were talking about earlier, how the skin is made up of uh, a surface, which we all see, but most of the skin is underneath where we don't see. And healthy skin and beautiful skin depend on this underneath area. This underneath area is called connective tissue, yep. also known as the dermis. And as we age, the connective tissue and the dermis start to shrivel, partially because we're not getting these fatty nutrients, because we're not absorbing the fatty nutrients. On the surface of the skin, we tend to pigment more rapidly as we get older, and our skin becomes more sensitive yeah. to the sun as we get older. Again, secondary to or following deficiencies in, absor deficiencies in nutrients and problems absorbing fatty nutrients. So as women age, it becomes important, not, number one, to take in these fatty nutrients yeah. supplementally. Number two, work on the digestive system with enzymes and probiotics and fiber and all the things we just talked about yep. so that you can absorb the nutrients. Right. And number three, and this is really interesting, uh, pre-liberating the fatty nutrients from foods. The fatty nutrients in vegetables, for example, are locked up and by braising your Brussels oh, sprouts, yeah. you braising your broccoli yeah. in butter mm -hmm. or in coconut oil, you'll liberate these fatty nutrients out of the vegetables and make it more ready, more readily available to, for absorption out of the level right. of the gut. So, so pre, yeah. essentially pre-digesting or, or pre-liberating right. these nutrients in the cooking process. You don't want to overcook, right. but slightly steaming these, uh, your, or, or braising mm -hmm. your, uh, your veggies you'll get will help release nutrients. these, you'll get more fatty nutrients out of the body. So uh, helping the body process fats on multiple level and then taking in those fats is a very important strategy for building connective tissue and protecting the outside part of the skin from sun damage or, or yep. any of these uh, kinds of rapid, uh, hyperproliferative rapid cell growth states like KP and acne. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, nail fungus. We were talking nail about fungus. This. I nail love fungus. Talk, I love talking about nail fungus. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> because it's so, it's so ironic to me. People want to know, like, how, how can you treat the nail fungus? <laughs> well, look, the body is, is incredible. It's always looking for ways to eliminate toxins. Yeah. And this is why we'll see what, what a lot of skin problems are, is the toxins All are being the eliminated toxins. through the skin. The body's yeah. trying to eliminate toxins through the skin. Psoriasis is a classic example. Psoriasis yeah. is a hyperproliferative state where the body's trying to eliminate uh, toxins, so it, it really revs up, really speeds up the division of cells so that toxins can be eliminated. Um, the uh, the th funny thing about nail fungus is it represents a detoxification strategy for the body. The body's mm -hmm. trying to eliminate fungus, so it looks for ways to eliminate the fungus. It so it eliminates the nails. The nails are constantly growing, it's a, mm -hmm. so it's an excellent route of, it, of elimination. And nail fungus, it really represents the, the elimination of the fungus from the blood and from the body. Yeah. And so you can't really treat the nail fungus because that's the end. Mm -hmm. That's the elimination. The nails are out of the body, essentially. Yeah. So you're, you're trying so to treat... the fungus is the end. That's, it's that's, the end. That's it's it. like you're trying to treat the excretion. Yeah. The real way to treat nail fungus is internally. Yeah. And check, you're going to love this because it all comes down to the digestive system, yeah. as always. So... Uh, the bacteria in the body, and there's bacteria largely in the gut, but there's bacteria everywhere. There's bacteria in your respiratory tract, there's bacteria in your eyes, there's bacteria on your skin. All of these bacteria in the body are collectively referred to as the microbiome. And these bacteria live in balance with yeast. Mm -hmm. So all the time we've got this balance between bacteria and yeah. yeast. And the bacteria are killing off the yeast, and the yeast are killing off the bacteria, which they're controlling. And, you know, it's actually killing, but we're, they're controlling yeah. each other. You know, uh, what's the most famous... Uh, 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 antibiotic, penicillin. That, yeah. Where does it come from? It comes from yeast. Yeah. It comes from oh, yeah. So that yeast make things that kill the bacteria. Bacteria, right. in turn, make things that kill the yeast. And everything is hunky-dory under ordinary circumstances. But because of this problem with the microbiome, because of how we eat and because of the, the uh, cesarean sections and because of um, uh, antibiotics in the water and in the food, I and mean, we're doing all of these things that kill off the bacteria, yeah. the yeast overgrow. Right. When the yeast overgrow, the body looks to eliminate them and eliminates them through the nails. Okay. So uh, if you're dealing with nail fungus, 
Focus on the gut. Focus on the microbiome, eliminating problem foods. I know we keep repeating ourselves, but that's really but that's what, what it's the root about. comes down that's to. That's what it's right? really all about. Okay. You don't treating nail fungus doesn't occur at the level of the nail. Right. It occurs at the level of the blood, the level of the inside of the body. It doesn't yeah. occur at the level of the outside of the body. It occurs at the level. So of nail the inside fungus of the body. is just another toxin coming out. It's of your a skin. toxin yeah. coming out, and you yep. can't really treat the excretion. You've got to treat yep. it inside the body, and you do it by balancing out those yeast with uh, with good bacteria and all these digestive strategies that we talked about. Okay, interesting. One quick question here with um, your, your retinol gel, the true treatment retinol gel. We've right. got a couple questions. People want to know like, how do you recommend, because it's potent. Potent. How do you recommend the best strategy okay. of using so it? So retinol has multiple functions. I like things, I like multifunctionality. I'm always looking for ingredients that do lots of different things, and retinol does lots of different things. Yeah. One of the most important thing is things it does is it drives the production of proteins at the genetic level, it activates genes. It turns on genes and to stimulate the production of collagen and elastin. But it also has another effect, and another important effect, it stabilizes the growth of skin cells. Remember we talked earlier, right. you don't want cells growing too fast or too slow. Retinoic acid has a way of stabilizing, we call it normalizing the growth of cells. So they're growing too fast, it slows them down. If they're growing too slow, it speeds them up. So it has mm -hmm. a, cell, a skin cell normalizing effect. And then uh, it also exfoliates. It has a skin smoothing effect on the surface and that, uh, that improves hyperpigmentation, improves the tone of the skin. There's a lot of uh, superficial benefits. Uh, so with retinol, you want to be using it as much as possible, but you don't want to be overusing it. Yeah. And so it's like exercise. You've got yeah. to find the sweet spot. Yeah. You don't want to underdose and you don't want to overdose. How do you know if you're overdosing? Your skin is constantly red and constantly inflamed because yep. ret retinol can be very stimulating. Yep. If, you're not, if you're underdosing, you're not going to get the benefits that you're looking for. So I recommend, and it's going to depend on skin types, I recommend people start off with every 10 to 14 days, once, once every 10 to 14 days. Right. Now, uh, some people will be able to use it more, some people will be able to use it less, but that's a good starting point. If you notice that you're good at 10 to 14 days, do it a little bit more. Do it once every seven days. Mm -hmm. Then go to once every four days. See where you are, where you're not too inflamed, you're not too, your skin's not too right. aggravated, and understanding that the rest period is when the tissue grows. Right, see a lot of people don't realize that. They're like, I have to put it on every no. night and I have to. You want to take right. advantage of that rest period. Right. The rest period is when the tissue grows. So you want to make sure you have a long enough rest period between doses. Which is so interesting, because I'm telling you, everyone thinks that they need to I know. apply it all the time. The you tissue know? doesn't grow when it's being stimulated. Right, You're... so you stimulate it and then it grows and that's yes. the part where you, you need. You want to okay. maximize that period of growth. Okay. So you want to stimulate it, sit back and let it grow. Right. And that's actually, you know, that's a metaphor for how we want to live our lives. Certainly yeah. that's true about the gym. Yeah. You know, you know, as a personal trainer, people overtrain. Yeah. They try to go over every exactly. day. You don't get the benefits. Yeah. I find that if I take three or four days between lifting weights, I'm stronger. Mm -hmm. When I take, when I try to lift the weights on the fourth day, I find that I'm really much stronger than if I try to go every day or even right. every other day. Right. So leveraging that rest period becomes important. Um, Which is so interesting. I'm telling you, nobody nobody knows yeah, that. Yeah, taking advantage of the recipe. There, there yeah. was one more thing I was going to tell you that the retinol, and I forgot what <laughs> that was. Small doses, you don't need very much. Right. Oh, I remember what it was. Uh, not everybody's going to peel. There's okay. this thing about peeling, and yeah. I know how, you know, it's interesting to peel, and you want to have dead skin coming off, but if your skin is already exfoliated, skin cells are already going off, right. and you're already taking care of your skin, you're already doing stuff for your skin, you're not going to peel as much. Mm -hmm. If you haven't done anything for your skin, and the dead skin cells are piling you're up, you're going to peel much more. And Which is why I feel like the more you use a retinol product, the, the less, less you're going to see the exactly, peel. Exactly. Right. The less you're going to peel. The more you use it, the less you're going to peel. Yep. And also... Uh, it takes a, there's like a two or three dose acclimation period. Mm -hmm. So the first couple times you use it, you, your skin may get really dramatically inflamed or dramatically right. red. You might notice things more. And then over time, your skin will start to adjust to it. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I was saying earlier, how when you're deficient in nutrients, your body sucks up those nutrients like a dry sponge sucks up water. And same with retinol. If your skin is deficient yeah. in vitamin A, when you first put the retinol on, it's going to oh, really okay. suck up that retinol and right. really dramatic effects. But over time, the, as you use the retinol on a regular basis, right. you're not going to effects aren't going to be as dramatic or as noticeable, but yeah. you're still feeding the cells. And you know what I found interesting that you had mentioned last time? You said if you're actually deficient with your, um, was it EFAs? Yeah. That you're... Crave fats? Yes. yes. That you yes. actually... Do you notice that? When, yes. Did you notice uh -huh. that? Yes. That Isn't when that you cool? supplement with yeah. those, mm -hmm. you can actually tolerate retinols and things better. That's so true. Yeah. That's one of the main reasons why people can't tolerate the retinoids and the retinols right. is because of fat deficiencies. Right. Because fat 
builds up the connective tissue. And so if your connective tissue is really weak and then you try to drive the production of connective tissue externally, your skin's going to respond in this angry, inflamed kind right. of way. But if your skin has all the raw materials it needs and then you put your foot on the gas, retinol is like putting your foot on the gas. Yeah. But if you don't have any oil in your engine and you put your foot in the gas, you're going to burn out your engine. Mm -hmm. But if you take essential fatty acids and also vitamin A and also vitamin D and you're well supplemented, when you put your foot on the gas, now your cells can start to produce stuff. Right. So you got to make sure that you're loaded up with nutrients if you're going to stimulate the skin. And this is one of the reasons why stimulation of the skin gets a bad rap. Mm -hmm. is because people are trying to stimulate the skin without having the raw materials necessary to, right. to actually sustain the activity that the stimulation is causing. And you end up burning out your engine. Right. And that's where a lot of problems come from people who try to exfoliate or people who try to do stimulating procedures on the surface of the skin. They don't have the raw materials that are required to leverage that stimulation and the cells end up burning out. Right. So if you try to use retinol, try to use retin, retin A or, or retinoids or active materials in the skin and you couldn't, there's a very good chance that you had a problem with either fat deficiency or you're not taking yeah. in essential fatty acids. You're Which not I, found, I, I found myself to be a yes. big game changer myself. It's so. huge. Yeah. EFAs are huge. EFAs may be the single most important nutrient for the skin. Let's talk about um, skin firming. Skin firming. Let's talk about that because we firming. all want firm skin. Right. We all so complain about that. We'll do it all together. We'll yeah. do skin firming, yeah. crepey skin, yep. turkey neck, eye bags. Yep. Okay. Because okay. they're all kind of... They're all the same thing. Okay. All of these things are the outside version of prolapses and hernias inside the body. It's all an osteoporosis and a thinning and a shriveling. As we get older, our body thins and it shrivels and things start to fall apart. Mm -hmm. That's because the body is held together, all the parts of the body are held together, and the body's robustness and beefiness and thickness are all a manifestation of a part of the body that we unfortunately do not appreciate as much as we should, and that's called connective tissue. All heard of the term, probably heard of the term yeah. connective tissue. There's four kinds of tissue in the body. And tissue is just a biological word that means stuff. So, you know, tissue sounds all sciencey and biology. Just think stuff. Mm -hmm. There's four kinds of stuff in the body. You have uh, the beef, and the beef is made up just like steak is beef. If you cut, if you, uh, cut a cow, it's kind of gross, I guess. But, but <laughs> I'm a vegan here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But <laughs> you get a steak, yeah. and the steak is made up of two parts. Yeah. The steak is made up of, of muscle tissue. That's what we call, that's the steak part, the yeah. flesh. And then marbling or lines that's chewy and gristly, that's the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. And so that's the bulk of the body. Okay. Bulk of all, all, all mammal bodies are connective tissue and muscle that's all together. Do you ever see the body's exhibit? You know the yeah, body? Okay. yeah. The body's exhibit is the connective tissue and the muscle. Mm -hmm. And that's like 80% of our, our bodies. Right. The whole uh, connective tissue muscle complex that makes up the body uh, is covered with... Uh, coating and that coating is called epithelial tissue mm -hmm. and then the whole system is electrified with wiring and that wiring is called nervous tissue and between the nervous tissue the covering epithelial tissue and then the mass the connective and the uh, muscle tissue you have a human body now when we age the visible dramatic signs of aging are this flesh uh, this uh, muscle and uh, muscle and connective tissue complex this yeah. that's in the body is shriveling up Okay. And it happens everywhere. It happens in the blood. The blood, the, the blood vessels are made up of connective tissue. It happens in the bones. The bones are made up of connective tissue. And in the skin, it happens in the dermis, which is largely connective tissue. That's the stuff underneath mm -hmm. the skin. So as we get older, we thin. Mm -hmm. Now the connective tissue doesn't just give the body bulk. It also holds thing in place, holds everything in place. So that uh, if you, you ever see a jello mold mm -hmm. with like fruit inside yeah. of it, right? Yep. So pineapples here and the cantaloupes here and the honeydews here and it's all held in a matrix of connective yeah. tissue. That's, a, that's right. a jello mold. Yep. That's the body. Okay. Except the pineapple is the heart and the, uh, the, the kiwi is the spleen and the cantaloupe is the liver and it's all held within a matrix, matrix of connective tissue. On the outside of the body, all of the structures in the skin, the follicles and the uh, the surface part of the skin are all held in, in place by the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. The fat inside the skin is all held in place by the connective tissue. As we age, that connective tissue deteriorates and inside the body, our pineapples drop mm -hmm. and we call that a prolapse. 
Yeah. You can have a prolapsed mitral valve in your heart. You can have a prolapsed uterus. You can have a prolapsed bladder. And basically, it's the jello of the jello mold degrading, and then everything drops out. And that's what happens as we get older. When we're young, we got like a shape. Mm -hmm. As we get older, we blob up, right? <laughs> yeah. We lose our shape. Yeah. And that loss of yeah. shape is caused by a breakdown in the connective tissue. Okay. The same thing happens in the skin. The connective tissue holds the surface, the epithelia of the skin in place. As the connective tissue thins, the surface of the skin starts to, starts to uh, uh, sag. That's called right. a wrinkle. Right. The thinning part of the skin it looks like turkey skin mm -hmm. because there's no more fat and there's no more connective tissue supporting the skin. So it looks kind of crepey. Yeah. The neck, it'll look turkey-like. In the yeah. eyelids and under the eyes, the connective tissue holds the fat in place. When the connective tissue breaks down, the fat starts to drop oh, and you get right. these fat deposits and everything sort of hangs. Right. It's all the manifestation of a breakdown of the connective yeah. tissue. Okay. You know, when you see somebody walking, when they're young, they're walking like this. And when they're old, they're walking like this. Mm -hmm. That's a breakdown of the connective tissue. In the blood vessels, when the connective tissue starts to break down, you get cholesterol deposits to patch up the connective tissue. That's presumably what people call the cause of heart disease is not the cholesterol. It's the connective tissue in the, heart, in the blood vessels breaking down. Yeah. So anything you could do to build connective tissue is going to help your heart. Which it's, I have to say, you have like the most firm skin. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it's connective tissue building. Yeah. You know, I'm almost okay, 60 so years old. How old are you? I'm almost 60. Look, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, so okay, tell us what that's what we so need to know. How do we build connective? connective? Tissue. How do we do that? Let me just tell you the good news about building connective yeah. tissue. Not only do you improve your eye, you, the eye bags and your eyelid health, you improve your joint health, you improve your muscle health, you improve uh, the health of your blood vessels, you improve, uh, you pre prevent hernias from occurring, you prevent prolapses or you reduce the likelihood of prolapses from occurring, you walk more strong, you, uh, more upright, you mm -hmm. walk stronger. I mean, everything in the body improves when you build the connective tissue. Yeah. Not only that, but remember we said all disease is cell disease? Yeah. Well, the connective tissue surrounds all the cells and the connective tissue is charged with feeding the cells. So the cells get fed through the connective tissue. The cells get oxygenated through the connective tissue. The cells get detoxified through the connective oh, tissue. Right. So the connective tissue does everything in the body. So all disease is cell disease, but the health of the cell depends on the connective tissue. That's so interesting. Right. Yeah. So build, you think building connective tissue is important? Right. Heck right. yes. It's the essence of anti-aging. Right. Is building the connective tissue. Okay, give tissue. us a list. Okay, there's We're ready. What do we need to do? Well, there's internal and there's topical. Yeah. I developed the truth yep. to allow you to build connective tissue topically. Right. So connective tissue building topically is just as important as connective tissue building internally for the skin. Right. Uh, it's not just as important for the inside of the body. You got to do internal things for the inside of the body to build connective tissue. So how do you do it? Well, bone broth. Mm -hmm. Eating connective tissue helps you build connective tissue. Okay. So this is where bone broth comes in. Or bone okay. bro also, you can get bone broth protein now. Yep. The building blocks of connective tissue. Uh, vitamin C. You can't make connective tissue without vitamin C. Okay. This so is why, supplementing vitamin this C. This is so one of the. I don't want to say it's the, the the main reason, but it's certainly one of the most important reasons why connected why vitamin C is so important yep. is because in chemistry we call it the rate limiting step for connective tissue. Meaning, without vitamin C, you're not building connective tissue. Okay. In fact, the disease that's caused by vitamin C deficiency is a connective tissue disease called scurvy. Mm -hmm. Scurvy is when your connective tissue just dissolves. Mm -hmm. While well, we all are suffering from subclinical scurvy, which is scurvy that's not bad enough for you to have to uh, get hospitalized or go to the doctor for, but scurvy where you're just not building connective tissue, where you yeah. got osteoporosis. Right. Vitamin C is way more important for your bones than calcium. Because without vitamin C, you can't make collagen. You can't make bones. Right. Calcium is important for sure, but vitamin C is the rate limiting step for the building of bone without, or for the main component right. of bone, which is collagen. Yeah. Um, so vitamin C is really important. Uh, internal vitamin C, 1,000, 2,000 milligrams a day. If you take too much vitamin C, you can get a little crampy. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be a little bit careful with dosing on vitamin C. Uh, so bone broth protein, vitamin C, essential fatty acids turn on the production of connective tissue. Oh, they do too. EFAs turn on the production yeah. at the genetic level. Vitamin D is important for connective tissue building. Zinc is important for connective tissue building. Oh, good. So all the supplements that you already told us that kind of take Pretty is much. all helping. Okay. And then also making sure you're absorbing uh, uh, absorbing the nutrients out of the gut. Yeah. Uh, so using digestive enzymes and probiotics, those are all important for connective tissue building. Um, aloe vera, silica, I think, right? Aloe vera, polysaccharides, yeah. hyaluronic acid mm -hmm. is important for connective tissue building. Silica in mm -hmm. the form of liquid silica gel, very yeah. underappreciated nutrient, is important for connective tissue building. One of the biggest enemy of connective tissue that will lead to connective tissue destruction faster than anything sure. else 
Sugar. I know it. Yeah, sugar. <laughs> sugar destroys yeah, connective exactly. tissue. Exactly, it does. Yes, and people that eat a lot of sugar, they're going to get crazy. Yes. they're going to get their. Also, they're uh, gonna cigarette eat. smoke will yeah, destroy connective right. tissue, and that's why you'll see cigarette smokers a lot of times. Oh, and they have, ate, do they, that smoke they, age. They, just and they so, thin, their skin will thin really yeah. fast. And you can tell smokers. I mean, I don't want to beat up on smokers, but you can tell by looking at their face. If yeah. you've seen enough it's smokers, thin. it's thinner yeah, because, skin's thin. because the connective tissue is destroyed by smoking. Yeah. A connective tissue is not only not only feeds the cells, not only um, oxygenates the cells, not only detoxifies the cells, but it also electrifies the cells. In fact, our body conducts electrical energy through the connective tissue. In fact, ancient Chinese people knew that if they stuck needles in your connective tissue in certain spots, they could mm -hmm. change the electrical energy in your mm -hmm. body, and that's called acupuncture. Yeah, And right. acupuncture meridians are based in connective tissue. Okay. So connective tissue is incredibly so, important. Okay. Topically, the ultimate connective tissue builders are what I use in the truth. Yeah. Vitamin A and vitamin C. And that's right. exactly why I made the truth, is because I wanted people to have an ability or have, the, uh, have a, a way of delivering high doses of connective tissue building nutrients through the right skin. To the, right to where they need to go. Right to, right. right to where it needs to be. And in my opinion, if you're not using high concentrations of vitamin A and high concentrations of vitamin C, vitamin A in its retinol form, mm -hmm. and uh, by high concentrations, I mean 4 or 5%, on a, not on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but on a periodic basis, and then high doses of vitamin C, you're completely missing the boat on anti-aging yeah. skin care because that's how you build the connective tissue right. with vitamin A and with vitamin C. And what I did with the truth is I took everything else out. And all you get with uh, the truth is just vitamin A, vitamin C, a couple skin brightening ingredients, some cholesterol, and then a way of delivering all of those nutrients into the skin. Right. Remember, it's not just what you take, right. it's what actually gets delivered into the cells. And that's why you have I put to do in my, both. You have to do both. Right. I put my transdermal delivery matrix and I use serums and I use fatty substances to drive these nutrients into the into in the high concentrations. Tissue. In, in high, high concentrations. concentrations. Yeah. Into the connective tissue. That's the key. Yep. All these that's why I say massage it in, use damp skin. Because I'm, yep. you want to get the product into the connective tissue. And that's why these aren't really moisturizers. You know, mm -hmm. they're treatments. Yeah. These are ways of dosing your skin with connective with, with connective tissue building nutrients. And that's why two or three days later you start to see your skin. You're right. like, oh my gosh, what's going on? It's got you know, I get calls all the time. People say it's changing the quality of my skin. It's changing so the fast, texture too. of my skin. Yeah. It's because you're driving nutrients into the cells of the connective tissue, the fibroblasts, stimulating their production uh, their ability to produce connective tissue. Okay. Okay, so I think we've pretty much covered quite a bit there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are gonna wrap this one up. We will see you guys in our next video. Bye. Bye.